So I do have just a few scriptures as you know, Pastor Rick called me this morning. To, um, you know, just, of course, you know, that's when you start praying. And, um, and the Lord dropped a few things in my heart that I think he wants us to, um, to take a look at tonight. And um, we'll be talking about his word and we'll be talking a little bit about prayer. And I'm going to give you an opportunity after I close uh, just be just be asking the Lord if there's something, someone um, that He would put on your heart to pray for, and we won't do an extended time, but just just be praying about it. And um, if you would like to share that prayer um, out loud with the body, um, that would be great. And if it's just an internal prayer between you and the Lord, uh, one of my favorite passages out of the Scripture is um, whenever uh, Eli spotted Hannah. And um, thought she was drunk, accused her of being so, because she was just praying, just, just her lips were moving. He couldn't hear anything, but you know, her lips were moving. Um, same thing with Nehemiah, I think, when he was handing the, the cup to the king, and he said, and then I prayed to the Lord God of heaven in my heart. You know, he just, he has this inward prayer. So you don't have to be so concerned about, you know, wow, they pray better than this guy. I pray less than they do. It, it has nothing to do with that. Yeah, prayers of the heart sometimes is manifest out of the lips. That's fine, but you, when when we're told to pray unceasingly, you can't do that when you're on a phone call with somebody, not out with your lips, but you can in your heart and with your mind. And yeah, that's just a, a little bit about what I want to talk about tonight. Is just you know, having that that prayerful spirit, that prayerful attitude. Uh, that we will need uh, more and more going forward. Amen. So, uh, I want to take a look at a couple of scriptures, just kind of set the stage here. Um, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11, and we're going to start at verse 22. Paul is speaking of his suffering for Christ. He begins with a question, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequently. In deaths, often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often. In cold and in nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. That makes you want to go out and serve the Lord, doesn't it? <laughs> it's exhausting just to read that. And I'm not going to expound on it because every sentence in there is a sermon in and of itself. Um, when you start looking at what the Apostle Paul endured and uh, what he truly had to go through. But it's just amazing to me that he gets down to the very end and he says, and besides all that, <coughs> as if that was just like a small list, it, then he puts my deep concern. That word in the, in the Greek is marimna, and it means anxiety and care. And... And it, it's a different kind of anxiousness when he says, be anxious for nothing, when he puts that in his other epistles. But he had this deep concern, this, this 
love that drove him to that point uh, for the churches because he, he couldn't be with them weekly like our pastor can. Uh, he couldn't be with them you know, every, every time they needed him. Uh, he, he would have communion with them and he would leave and he may not see their faces again um, you know, sometimes for you know, maybe months or years. And so he carried that with him uh, because of the love that he had in his heart for him. <clears throat> but it's just amazing he would mention that on top of all the other that he just mentioned. But he, he expounds on this just a little bit further or alludes to it again in 2 Timothy. Uh, take a look there, 2 Timothy, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 3. Second Timothy three, and we're going to pick it up. Still healing and rustling, so I'll wait just a moment. New Testament. <laughs> you guys don't need to know that. Let's pick it up at verse ten. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love. Perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. And out of them all the Lord delivered me. Powerful statement, particularly when taken in the context of what we just read in Corinthians. <clears throat> out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes. And all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, we, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. You know, we, we talk about that, about the, uh, those four points of Scripture. Scripture is inspired as God. God has breathed literally His life into them. They're inspired. What else? Infallible. They're infallible. And I'm not going to spam on every one of them, but what's next? Inerrant. It's without errancy. And what's the last one? Authoritative. authoritative. It has the authority over life, and that's what we're going to look at right now is how that authority manifests itself. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. We're going to look at one other scripture, and that's in Acts chapter 6. Then we'll spend a few minutes tying this together. <clears throat> uh, we're going to look at, um, let's pick it up in the beginning, verse 1. Now, in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So what we've just done is, is we've retroed back to just not too long after the birth of the church. And 
the disciples or the apostles were telling the other disciples there to choose you know, the Stephens of the world and, and, and Phillips, those guys that they made um, um, servers uh, or more or less deacons, yes, um, beneath them. But I just thought it was interesting when I was looking at this, it just, it appeared to me that even then, at the church in its young age that it was in, um, began as just more or less a remnant, right? I mean, just a very, very small part of the millions of Jews, uh, professing Jews in that day. And even then, the Holy Spirit began to prepare the bride of Christ, he began to prepare his body for what was to come. And he knew the ideal best preparation that you could ever have would be prayer and the ministry of the word. And that's where he took them in the beginning. And that's prophetically or, or however you want to describe it, that's what the Lord allowed Peter and James and John and those guys to be able to see we can't spend our time serving, we, not, not in that capacity, because it, it's like there's this cloud, dark cloud that's on the horizon out there, and through the eyes of their faith they could see it, and they knew they had to prepare the body. They had to prepare these newborn babes um, out there, and they began doing so. And then that's what you see being manifest in Paul's ministry years and years later, all these things that were coming, but he was ready. And he was preparing Timothy to be ready, knowing that these things were coming. You know, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, I mean, who, who in the body of Christ would that not represent? All who desire to live godly? Uh, yeah, all of us do. All of us want to live godly in Christ Jesus. We don't. You know, we misstep. We miss it. Some of us every single day, you know, but the desire is in there because both to will and to do that, that's all from the Lord. He puts the desire within our hearts to want to do righteously, to want to be a righteous individual. And then we just succumb to whatever it is we succumb to, but we come back again and again and again. And it's called grace and it's called mercy. And God continues that process in us until we draw our last breath. And it's called sanctification. It's simply our walk. It's not to be discouraging because if you, if you give up when you first stub your toe, you're never going to learn to walk. But it's, you got to keep getting back up. You got to keep getting back up. And that's all that he wants. And he puts that desire within us to do that. So, the Holy Spirit was preparing this, this little church, this baby church back then for what was coming. And, and I, just, I just started thinking about where we are right now um, as a body. And we think about the professing 200 million Christians there are in Christendom in the United States. And, and then you realize, you know, it's just, there's, there's just a remnant. Um, there's still we're, we're, we're kind of like back to where they started in a sense, like it's this small group. And I'm not trying to sound elitist or anything like that, but it's just the apostasy has grown so much and it's nothing that we haven't been warned about. It's all in there. But as that crowd size grows and grows and grows, then those who God is calling aside to his word and to prayer seems to be shrinking in the face of all of that. But it's okay because what God can do with a few, he has shown that time and time and time again. We saw it in Jesus' ministry from the 70 to the 12 to the three to the one. I mean, he just, he can do phenomenal things with just simply those whose hearts are obedient, yeah, whose hearts are willing, whose hearts desire to do so. So, prayer and His Word, prayer and His Word, Th those were just things that were resounding early and earlier on back in the church. And tonight, I just wanted to let 
you know and understand, this word is not necessarily um, not for the body. It's for you, individually, you personally. That's the way I want you to receive this. Um, don't look at it as, you know, well, I'm sure glad so and so is hearing this because they need to hear it because they've been going through some stuff, you know. And, um, and maybe that's true about so and so. But you know what's said of trials and tribulation and persecution? I mean, if you're not going through it now, you just came through it. And if you're not just coming through it, you're about to go into it. It's called life. And those who are godly in Christ Jesus, you know, it, it, it's appointed. You know, it's appointed that a man wants to die. Well, this is kind of appointed too for those whose hearts are truly after him. And so this is just a, a, a word of encouragement and exhortation to just simply be ready. Be ready now. If you're enjoying a period of peace, God bless you. Don't, don't waste the time. If things are, are calm and pleasant in your life and things are, are going good, yeah, we're in one. <laughs> Okay. I do this to the men all the time on Saturday. It's like, okay, here you go. So you use some tissues. Well, I hadn't started yet. Well, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Take some tissues. But anyway, and it's, it's incredible to go through with the Lord. And I have a helpmate, you know, that I can go through after 45 years together. She's... <laughs> She said something earlier today. What was that you said? That, um, let's see. And for richer, for poorer, okay, we've been there, you know, all the way through. We started off, you know, you couldn't, didn't have two pennies to rub together. But, um, but you know, God's brought us through that. In sickness and in health, he's, he's brought us through that, through some really, really tough times that Terry particularly has had. She goes, nah, we're at the better and the worse. <laughs> so, and it just gets worse. But it's okay. Um, because you know, those vows aren't near as strong as his word. And that's where we keep coming back to. And that's what will sustain us. That's what will bring us through. So the, the church worldwide is going through things that the church here in the States is just not going through. They're living through some of the same things that Paul is talking about. That's the persecuted church we, we talk about and we pray for and, and we, we give to, we, we support. They're the ones who are living those first verses who we were reading. <clears throat> They're living it every day, but not here. But that does not minimize what can come into your life personally that you never see, that you never thought was coming, and some of you know, because you've lived it already, and others of you will live it in the time ahead. Again, not a Debbie Downer, I'm just trying to exhort you that while it is today, as the scripture says, to just start taking advantage of the time. What, what's the scripture say? How is it? Making, you're redeeming the time, redeeming the time. You're buying up those opportunities. Um, to, to do certain things and just to maybe be a little bit more cognizant and aware uh, during your day. You see an email come through from John Michael and it's about little Logan. Get in the habit. Just make it a little habit. Just to stop just just for a second and just just offer up just a, a few words, whether it's in your heart, whether it's out loud and you're behind the steering wheel. It doesn't matter. The Lord hears all of that and you just simply offer up the prayer, you know. And then you just go back to what you were doing. And that you can just live. The disciples said, the apostles said, we're going to dedicate ourselves. We're going to commit ourselves not to serving tables, but to the word of God and to prayer. And that's what they wanted to devote themselves to. They didn't go into a little room and just shut themselves up and stay there. You know, they exploded out of that room when God would fill them with his spirit. And that's what he is desiring and that's what he's waiting to do in so many of our lives and what he's looking for is just for us to begin taking that little bit of extra time if you don't have a complete 
and utter just love for his word. And it doesn't make you get out of bed early in the morning to have some time, some time with him, not just reading the devotional or whatever, but just spending time just before him. And just, just, just have your Bible on your lap and just say, Lord, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. And, you know, then you hear Psalm 23. You know, okay. Well, you read that. And I read that a thousand times. Well, you read it this time and it speaks to you because he just breathed his life into you, which is what just happened. But it can't happen, you know, if you're watching WYFF to see what the weather is going to be for today and you're reading your devotion at the same time. You know, it takes a little bit of, not that you can't check the weather, it's okay, but it takes a little bit of time to do these things, to cultivate this way of life. And there are days coming, unfortunately, in, in many of our lives where things will get worse before they get better. Yeah, we don't have all the issues that Paul's talking about. Maybe eventually we, they will. I hope we're out of here when all that happens here. But none of that matters because God's sovereignty is our sanity. So we don't have to be so concerned about these things. These are not to drum up worries and fears or anything like that. This is to drum up the complete confidence that we should have in his word and in prayer and in his holy name. That's where our confidence needs to be. So this is nothing more than just a checkup of, you know, where are we? You know, where are we not as a body, but I'm talking about you as an individual. Where are you? You know, where, where are you in the, in the context of prayer and in the ministry of His Word, prayer and studying His Word? You don't have to be a wordaholic and you're in it you have 15 hours a day. If you work, work. Take care of your family. Do what you need to do. But just begin trusting Him. Just say, Lord, what is it you want to share with me out of your Word? Yeah. And, and it, it's amazing. You can ride by a billboard and see some little scripture or something, and he can cause that one scripture to give you an hour's worth of just meditative study and just listening, and you're flipping back and forth. He said, that sounds a lot like this scripture over here. And he leads you, and he'll guide you through that. You don't have to do some kind of inductive, heavy Bible study. Those are great. But just on a daily basis, just be listening be listening and be listening for what you want me to pray for, who you want me to pray for. Just like I asked you at the beginning, you know, is, is there something in someone's life that they just need? Because oh, prayer, overused term, well, maybe not, maybe it's underused. Prayer changes things. We know that. This little body knows it better than anybody uh, because we have so many prayer warriors in this body. And, and the thing about it, you, you don't have to beat yourself up if you're not on the <laughs> prayer call in the morning, in the afternoon, or evening. Um, it, it's okay. God's raised up people to be on there. And if He wants you on there, He'll put that in your heart. But if He doesn't put it in your heart, that doesn't mean you can't pray. Amen? So it's okay. You can pray from afar, and He'll still hear your prayers. You'll still be part of that prayer that is going forth, that incense. It's just rising before his throne. So just an encouragement along that line. Um, I want to close looking in uh, 1 Peter. Uh-oh, Deborah, I forgot about you. You're going to be in that. <laughs> We're going to look at a, um, just an exhortation. from 1 Peter chapter 1. And this is for those of you who may be going through something right now. And if not, write this scripture down because you'll need it when you do go through something. And if you never go through something, see me after the service. <laughs> I'd like to talk with you about that. <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 1, let's pick it up at verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, 
being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible, full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That's the end result. That's what we're all striving through all of this to arrive. And he says that joy that is inexpressible and full of glory, that's waiting for you when you come through these trials. It's always there. That's a promise. That's a promise of his word. That it'll always be there. You may have to read that and read that and read that while you're in the midst of something. <laughs> it's like, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But it's okay. Keep telling yourself that because it's a promise from his word. Let him breathe that life into you to give you that hope and to keep you stable and steadfast through the trial, whatever it is. Amen? This is a word to you personally. I don't have time to look every one of you in the eye, but just receive it to you personally. Okay? Now, is there anyone that you would like to pray for or anything that you would like to pray for? Not putting anybody on the spot. I gave you plenty of time up front, right? So, um, I'd like to open the, the floor up for that, and I will close I'll just, um, just for a few minutes, only if the Lord has placed something specific within here that we need to pray about. Because we've had the Word, so now we're going to pray. Amen. Amen. And feel free just to either stand or sit, and like we're told so many times, just speak loud enough where we can all hear you. Don't be like Hannah. She's a very new believer, and um, her name is, she was a Jeff, and that I just sense that there's a lot, some trials, and, and um, you know, she doesn't have a family that has any kind of foundation. She wasn't brought up with it, but she's hungry, and I'm just, I just have a heart and pray for her, and just to pray for her faith, that it would, because I know that um, there's medical, there's, there's, like, Things that are coming against her quickly and hard. And um, it just, I don't know, she's just really heavy on my heart. So. Feel free to pray. Okay. Well, Father, it's so grateful that I can be here. And that you are so good and kind and merciful. That you love us so much, Lord. It's not about um, the one who prays or anything. God, just help us be faithful to, to lift up those who um, you settled on our hearts and pray for Jeff, Lord, you know her. You know, for family, you know, the hardships that they have, the good things they have. I pray for wisdom and discretion and um, just help for us as a family and how to love her and encourage her and pray for her and lift her up. Lord, would you lead her in your word? Would you give her hunger and thirst for truth, Lord? And let her not be persuaded by the enemy, God. That, Lord, uh, that you're the lifter of her head and that she would look up and see your glory, God. You did great things in my life without her age that only you could have done. It is by your power and your spirit and I'm praying that you would do that mercifully for her, God. That you would fill her with the Holy Spirit and fill her with the truth. And I'm just thankful again, Lord, that all these saints are here praying and agreeing and um, even though they don't know her, Lord. I just love her. We love you. I know that you great things in store in Jesus' name. Amen. Something that um, you reminded me of when you talked about her being a new believer. I was reading a little bit earlier today um, in the fourth chapter of Mark, and Jesus was explaining uh, the parable of a sower. And when you look at his explanation, what you will see is that the enemy of our souls, what he's going after is God's word that's in your heart. 
That's what he's going after. And so as we purpose to hide his word into our heart for the, for the times ahead, as we purpose to do that, understand and know, you know, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. You know, he may use people sometimes to really, you know, get at you and, you know, create issues. But it's not flesh and blood. It's the principalities and the powers, the rules of the darkness of this world. That's another whole message. But just understand and know that's what he's coming for. And Jesus gave three different scenarios. He talked about, you know, the seed being scattered on the ground. And then he said, Satan comes immediately and takes the word out of their heart. That, that's easy. But then there's other, the, the seed goes into the ground, but the ground just is, doesn't have a whole lot of depth to it. The, the, you know, whatever is sown springs up, but it doesn't have any depth. And then through, let's see, what did he say it was? He said afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, again, it's all about going after God's living word inside of us. And he'll do whatever he can. If he can't make it work this way, then he'll try this way. If he can't do that, he'll go this way. And then it, it, it proceeds on to maybe they do remain in the Lord. And they stay there for a more extended period of time. Okay, well, it's going to take something a little bit different. And so that's when the, the weeds and the briars and all of that come in. And it tries to choke the word out from being fruitful. And in those he called the cares of the world. You know, the deceitfulness of riches. You know, kind of getting, yeah, I remember what, what Moses said when he told the children to come into the, the, the land of Israel, he said, don't forget when you, when you arrive and you have houses that you didn't build and you have vineyards that you didn't plant and God just bestows all these great things in your life. Just don't forget. Don't forget. You know, it's the Lord your God who gave you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant in the earth. A lot of people forget about that last part. You have what you have so that God can establish his covenant in the earth. Put those two together for that 2% that we talk about sometimes. But that's why we have what we have. Amen? And so he talks about the, de the deceitfulness of riches and then the desires for other things. That doesn't mean those things are bad but sometimes we have more desire in another area, even if it's positive, than we do for God's Word. And He can use those to just simply remove His Word, His time, the, our time for His Word, and those things you know, from our lives. Okay, now I'm done. Anybody else? I've got two. Yes. Actually, um, the first one is for Skyler's family. The 14-year-old who passed away of cancer. For those who may be watching live, I know we're not set up so you can hear these different requests, but it's okay. Just be asking the Lord who you can pray for, okay, while we're doing this. And we'll, we'll close in just a few minutes, but, um, but just be searching your own hearts just in case. Okay, Deborah.
question for this um, for to get through the next few days the decisions that have to be made and all the other people that she'll, she'll have to talk to and, and you want to just give her that peace yes. help her understand that Skyler will never be sitting here and she has found that cure I'll be bringing us to a, a hard close in just a moment, but if you've got a, um, a prayer that's burning on your heart, Roger. This isn't so much a prayer, but I, I, in all these things we talk about, trial and tribulation, persecution, I like these slowing words. These are from Romans 8 and begins in 37. In all these things, that's what we've been talking about, we have more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, not powers, not height, not depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nor anything else in all creation. If I miss something on the first few words, then here, let me wrap it up by saying this. <laughs> Only the Apostle Paul. I think that's a good thing to hold on to. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Very good word. Yes, sir. Um, so I might be um, pray for my friend in Orlando. Barb, she's 87. She should, her son brought death in the front yard on Sunday. And Barb just lost her husband a couple of years ago. And she asked a prayer for her, um, her son's wife, Jenny, and their only child, I think he's probably 33. Mm. I pray for them because I don't know if I'm not there. Amen. Do you want to pray for her? Well, just with Barb, she's a little bit more. She's hurting so much for her. She's already been through the loss of her husband now. The Lord, now she's lost her son. And her, her son has helped her out so much for her. We just pray uh, for her rest for her because she's not been able to sleep. She, uh, we just pray to be with her and, you know, as they make uh, plans for the service and all, and uh, sweet and mark. And I think that um, Mari just looked up the, uh, Mari just, I just pray that she would be able to get a night, good night's sleep too. She just can't sleep and she's I may not have gotten to your prayer, but it's okay. <clears throat> the Lord is always listening. So don't forget if he's put some on, on your heart. And please do not forget to be praying for Pastor Red and for Pastor David, particularly the Lord that would raise up Pastor David. 
uh, from his the, the sickness that he's going through right now to give him strength for his body and um, help him to be back on his feet uh, soon. Amen. All right, let's close. Father, we thank you for the ministry that the apostles began so many years ago and how they placed the proper priorities out there as an example for us. The ministry of the word and prayer. And the ministry of the word can be from your word into our own hearts. Help us, Father, to be more cognizant of where our time is spent through the day and, and just give us that gentle reminder as you so lovingly do as a father just give us that little nudge, Holy Spirit, and say, why don't you pray for so-and-so right now? And just give us a grace just to be able to be in a place where we can just stop and we can pray. Or take a look in Deuteronomy 28. And let me just show you something there. Or take a look in, name a book, and your Holy Spirit will bring something forth that will just speak your life into us. So, Father, we place ourselves, as always, at your disposal. We close with what we began with, Lord Jesus. Please be magnified. Be magnified in our hearts and our lives. May you have all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.